right. Hello, I'm Christian Lada, Chair of the CPC Committee and Board Member. Uh, today is the November 16th Committee on Professional Conduct meeting. The CBA has provided the opportunity for the public to participate via the WebEx platform. When we take public comments, we will begin by taking public comment from those individuals attending here in the Sacramento location. I will then ask the moderator to open up the lines for public comment. You will be allotted five minutes, up to five minutes for your public comment. Uh, Ms. Reed, can you go ahead and take roll to establish quorum? Nancy Corrigan. Nancy Corrigan, present. Christian Lada. Present. Joe Rosenbaum. Present. Yen Tu. Present. And Evangeline Ward. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Okay, I will go ahead and read our mission statement before we begin. The CBA's mission statement is to protect consumers by ensuring only qualified licensees practice public accountancy in accordance with the established professional standards. This mission is derived from the statutory requirement that protection of the public shall be the highest priority for the California Board of Accountancy in exercising its licensing, regulatory, and disciplinary functions. Whenever the protection of the public is inconsistent with the other interests sought to be promoted, the protection of the public shall be paramount. With that, let's go ahead and get into our agenda for today. Agenda item number one, public comments for items not on the agenda. Do we have any public comment here in Sacramento? Seeing none, moderator, can you please open the Q&A? This is the moderator and at the direction of the committee, I've opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment for items not on the agenda, please click the Q&A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen or use the raise hand function. And audio only participants may raise their hand by pressing star three on their device. I'll pause a moment to allow the public time to access these features and submit their requests. All right, and seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Yes, please. Thank you, moderator. Moving on to agenda item number two, approve the minutes of the July 27th, 2023 Committee on Professional Conduct meeting. Do I have a motion? Ms. Tu? Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Ms. Corrigan? I will second that motion. Thank you. Do we have any board member comments? Any public comment here in Sacramento? Seeing none, moderator, please open the Q&A. This is the moderator and at the direction of the committee, I've opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click the Q&A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen or use the raise hand function. And audio only participants may raise their hand by pressing star three on their device. All right, and it appears there are no requests for public comment. Would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Yes, please. Thank you, moderator. Uh, Ms. Reed, call for the vote, please. Nancy Corrigan? Yes. Christian Lada? Yes. Joe Rosenbaum? Abstain. Yen Tu? Yes. And Evangeline Ward? Yes. And the motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Okay, moving on to agenda item number three discussion and possible action on the National Association of State Boards of Accountancy, also referred to as NASBA, Credit Relief Initiative, and we'll have a presentation by Patricia Ritter, coordinator for the examination unit. Please proceed. Good morning, my name is Patricia Ritter and I am an examination unit coordinator within CBA's licensing division. The purpose of this agenda item is to provide the board with the opportunity to discuss and take possible action on the Credit Relief Initiative or CRI, formerly known as Amnesty. As outlined in the item, this initiative would invite CPA candidates back to the testing process by restoring their lost credit during the COVID-19 pandemic. NASBA has provided two options for implementing the recommendation. The first calls for conducting the extension in mass, while the second suggests approving extensions based on individual candidate requests. While staff do not have a recommendation on the policy, 
and whether the CBA should implement. If the CBA does ultimately choose to move forward with the CRI initiative, staff suggest the CBA limit its consideration to the first option, which is in mass, because it would lessen the impact on CBA resources compared to reviewing and approving individual requests. The time period used by NASBA for CRI is based on the national public health emergency that spanned from January 31st, 2020 through May 11th, 2023, shown on the timeline seen in attachment four. By prescribing to the national public health emergency dates and adopting in mass approach, CBA estimates just over 2,400 California candidates would be impacted. This group had almost 3,200 section credits expire during this period. Based on staff's review, it appears that for 38 candidates, reinstating credit loss during this time would allow the candidates to pass the CPA exam. Alternatively, the CBA would base CRI, could base CRI on the California COVID-19 state of emergency that spanned from March 4th, 2020 to February 28th, 2023, shown on the timeline seen in attachment five. CBA estimates over 2,300 California candidates had just over 3,000 section credits expired during this period. Again, based on staff's review, it appears that for 32 candidates, reinstating credit loss during this time would allow the candidates to pass the CPA exam. Attachments four and five also display information related to the transition policy and CRI dates that the CBA may want to take into consideration when discussing CRI. The transition policy will extend credit earned from June 30th, 2022 through December 31st, 2023 to June 30th, 2025, but does not address credits lost during that time. The CBA is asked to discuss and consider the CRI. If the CBA wants to implement CRI in California, staff suggests the CBA use one of the motion options listed on page four. Both motions would implement the CRI in mass. The first motion option uses the national public health emergency dates, and the second motion uses the California state of emergency dates. Motion option one is CRI with national public health emergency dates. Extend CPA exam credit that expired from January 30th, 2020 through May 11th, 2023 to June 30th, 2025 due to the COVID-19 pandemic natural disaster. Motion option two is CRI with California state of emergency dates. Extend CPA exam credit that expired from March 4th, 2020 through February 28th, 2023 to June 30th, 2025 due to the COVID-19 pandemic natural disaster. That concludes my presentation. At this time, I will invite Michelle Center, Licensing Chief, to assist in answering any member questions and turn the discussions back over to Chair Lada. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Ms. Ritter. Board members, uh, do you have any comments or questions on this agenda item? Ms. Corgan. Thank you, Chair Lada. Yeah, I just have a question as to whether, and I'm assuming that CBA staff have details on the candidates who lost parts. And, and if not, where we would, would we obtain those through NASBA? Thank you, uh, Member Corrigan. When you say information, are you referring to contact information or counts? I'm sorry. Well, specifically, they, the application, the applicant, the licensee, do we have the names of those 2,347 some odd individuals? <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. Yes, we do have their names. Uh, we do know what sections would need to be extended if you act upon um, this. We have contact information that they provided us at the time that they submitted their application that may or may not be current. Um, we, if, if you act, we would send um, something out to that address that we have on file. Um, I think it would be, not really possible given our resources to really track any individuals down that we don't have a current address for. Uh, but hopefully with information posted to social media, anyone who has changed their address would uh, reach out to us. Any other board member comments? 
Uh, I'll just make a quick comment. Um, I think this is great that NASBA is moving forward with this, and I think it definitely improves our pipeline initiatives. Um, and I'm more in favor of the national period. Um, Ms. Center shared with me that they have had applicants from out of state that might have been relocated during COVID for various reasons. Uh, so it would seem to me that the national period would be um, more feasible and flexible for those individuals who might not have been in California during the pandemic. Uh, so that's all I have. Um, any public comment in Sacramento before we move forward with forming motions? Thank you, Mr. Fox. Hi, good morning, Jason Fox of the California Society of CPAs. Um, so one, we're in strong support of the board um, uh, addressing this in some form or fashion. I think 23 states um, have approached this in some form. Uh, we're also in support of the board's um, the board staff recommendation of doing kind of a, a general kind of collective guidance or board policy related to the, the relief. Um, and we would agree with the, the motion uh, or the option of um, the national uh, date of the longer window. Uh, I, would, I would suggest a alternative uh, to the end date. So uh, if you look at the, the when the national um, emergency ends of June 30, or I'm sorry, May 31, 2023, there is a pool of candidates that would come after that period of time um, that would have credits. They were testing during COVID you know, presumably experiencing some disruptions uh, related to scheduling, um, illness, whatever it might be, that would have credits that would expire, say, July of this year or August of this year that wouldn't have the benefit, benefit of that uh, relief. So we would suggest just pulling the, the, the window to uh, end of this year, December 31, 2023, uh, and then kind of that pulls everyone together from an equity standpoint. You're capturing those that were early you know in the testing and then those kind of late in the testing that kind of COVID window uh, i think a couple states have approached it this way and and nasb uses kind of this kind of a donut hole to make sure we're really capturing um, all of the candidates that were kind of disrupted through the COVID. so um it would suggest a uh, amendment to the, the staff recommendation of the motion of just a longer testing uh, or the longer window uh, to december 31 2023 Thank you, Mr. Fox. Board members, did you have any comments or questions in relation to his comment? Ms. Ward. Um, thank you for your, your recommendation. And I do agree. I was thinking about that, that little window that's missing yeah. to where you might have um, candidates who applied and they became ill and whatever can happen, right? COVID yeah. is still here. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I think that's a great idea to, to close that gap up. Center. Thank you. I, I just want to state that we do have information that there were nine states out of the 23 mentioned by Mr. Fox that did deal with that, what is referred to as the donut. So if you don't mind, I would like to give you a third motion option that would be consistent with Cal CPA's position so that you consider it um, along with the other two options that you have. The third motion option would uh, state extend CPA exam credit that expired from January 30th, 2020 through December 31, 2023 to June 30th, 2025 due to the COVID-19 pandemic natural disaster. So that is um, option number three. Thank you for that, Ms. Center. Uh, Mr. Rosenbaum, did you have a comment or question? Actually, my, uh, my question was to see what response the center had. Perfect. She beat me to it. Ms. Tu? I totally agree with uh, what the suggestion was, and I would love to make the motion for the third option. I'm not going to repeat what the center already just read. Thank you, Ms. Tu. Do I have a second? Ms. Corgan? I will second that motion. Thank you. Ms. Reed, can you please? Oh. Oh, that's right. Sorry about that. Uh, due to the additional discussion, do we have any additional board member comments? Okay, seeing none, any more public comment here in Sacramento? Seeing none, moderator, please open up 
WebEx for Q&A. This is the moderator and at the direction of the committee, I've opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click the Q&A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen or use the raise hand function. And audio only participants may raise their hand by pressing star three on their device. I'll pause a moment to allow the public time to access these features and submit their requests. All right, and seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Oh, actually, I apologize. We do have one um, request for comment from Sarah Brown. And Sarah, you'll be given five minutes to speak and a 30 second warning. Please click the unmute me button when the prompt appears on your device. that's being presented and as a candidate myself just wanted to thank the board for listening to everyone's discussions around this um, I could speak for myself I was in the public accounting industry during COVID and I know that uh, public accounting as a whole has seen a lot of decrease in people who want to become accountants and CPAs and I know that during COVID those busy seasons were extremely challenging long hours and I know a lot of my peers have also just foregone the CPA altogether because they had credits that expired during this period and I know it was difficult to wear masks and N95 during Prometrics and Prometric places closed people had family members ill they were ill themselves so just wanted to thank everyone for taking this into consideration because I know we do need more CPAs. We do need more interest around the accounting profession as a whole. And um, yep, just appreciate it. And that's that's all I have to add. Thank you, Ms. Brown. We appreciate your feedback and your comment. And it's always nice to hear from our candidates. Moderator, are there any additional public comments? This is the moderator. Appears there are no further requests for public comment. Would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Yes, thank you. Ms. Reed, please call for a vote. Evangeline Ward? Yes. Ian Tu? Yes. Joe Rosenbaum? Yes. Christian Lada? Yes. And Nancy Corrigan? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Moving on to agenda item number four, discussion on a possible pathway for firm owners licensed with general accounting experience to obtain authority to sign a test report. Uh, this presentation will be given by Ms. Sarah Benedict, Manager of License Renewal and Continuing Competency Unit. Please proceed with your presentation. Thank you, Chair Lada. My name is Sarah Benedict and I'm the Manager of the Renewal and Continuing Competency Unit. The purpose of this agenda item is to provide the CBA with an opportunity to review, discuss, and provide direction on a passable, possible pathway for CPA firm owners who are licensed with general accounting experience to gain the experience necessary to convert their license to one with the authority to sign reports on a test engagement. The CBA's consideration of the Certified Public Accountant Experience Requirement Task Force, or CERT, CERT for short, recommended that staff explore a pathway to allow accounting firm owners licensed with general experience to obtain ex a test experience requir required for the ability to sign reports on a test engagement. Under the current law, a pathway for firm owners to convert their license to one with a test authority is not available because firm owners do not have a supervisor to review and evaluate the firm owner's work and complete the certificate of a test experience. The CBA provided staff guidance on the pathway, which is listed on page two. Staff sought input and guidance from Nasi Rison, CPA, Enforcement Advisory Committee member, who also served as a QC member, and Michael Williams, CPA, QC chair, in the development of the proposed solution. I would like to extend my appreciation for the time and effort of both Ms. Rison and Chair Williams. Staff also saw input from CalCPA, a CPA liability insurance provider, and NASBA prior to the completion of this agenda item. The proposed pathway would require the firm owner to enter into a written agreement, such as an engagement letter, 
with a third party attest monitor that would allow the monitor to serve in a role like that of a supervisor to verify the experience. Additionally, the pathway would require the firm owner and the monitor to appear before the QC prior to granting the firm owner's license conversion to one with a test authority. Some specific requirements for the firm owner, monitor, and engagement letter are detailed on pages three and four of the agenda item. I would like to draw your attention to a couple of the proposed requirements. The first is that only firm owners with at least one staff member who have the authority to sign a test engagements would be eligible. This was proposed to place the engagements being monitored at the firm applying for the license conversion instead of the engagements being done under the third party monitors firm. Now turning to the third party attest monitor eligibility section, I want to point out that as written, retired licensees would not be eligible to serve in a monitor role. On October 25th, 2023, staff shared the proposed pathway with the QC. Members engaged in a robust conversation and provided staff with feedback for consideration. Specifically, the QC requested that the CBA engage in conversations with firm owners who wish to convert their license to one with a test authority and licensees who may be suitable monitors to ensure there aren't any unintentional barriers in the proposed pathway. Staff agree that this input should be sought. Additionally, the QC discussed the possibility of directly stating that the third party monitor should be part of the engagement team on any engagement for which hours will be used on the certificate of experience. A conversation with additional experts supported this change. Shortly after this meeting, staff will begin contacting firm owners who have previously contacted the CBA requesting information on how they can convert their license from one with general authority to one with a test authority and with firms who may have staff suitable to serve in the monitor role. Staff will bring this topic back to the CBA after these conversations have occurred. Staff would appreciate any feedback or direction that members may have on the proposed pathway, including any additional atomic topics that staff should consider moving forward. That concludes my presentation. At this time, I will invite Michelle Center, Licensing Chief, to assist in answering any member questions and turn the discussions back over to Chair Lada. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Ms. Benedict. Do I have any board comments or questions? Mr. Rosenbaum? Yeah, I have a couple. How many states are, or how many jurisdictions are similarly situated with this sort of an issue? California is, is it, very unique. Is it zero? <laughs> is it zero? <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you. And then um, with respect to the monitor and, and approval and validation, is mm -hmm. it, uh, I mentioned that that's considered uh, to come up um, at the end when there's a presentation made in person. Um, is there going to be any other process by which the monitors will be pre-validated, pre-approved, according to the to the recommended um, require or the recommended eligibility? Um, so it, nothing in the current plan would require us to pre-approve these third-party monitors. We have put in some um, checks in there to try and ensure that we have quality, such as you know a, a clear peer review, for example, um, to, to try and make sure that we get who we intend to get as third-party monitors. I think that there, um, there's an opportunity for us to engage in conversations um, with this group that we intend to invite, which would be potential third-party monitor firms, as well as potential firm owners that might be interested. Um, I would like to engage in that conversation with them to talk about artificial barriers, and we can always um, add that question to the list with our firms. Is there anything um, in here to ensure that we have quality third-party monitors that, that they would like to, us to consider adding? It just seems to me that it would be rather awkward to uh... Uh, at the at the final presentation to uh, to determine that the monitor was not sufficiently qualified to act as such. Ms. Corgan, 
Thank you, Chair Lotta. Yeah, kind of along the lines of what Mr. Rosenbaum is saying, um, my thoughts are that we have to have some established mechanics of how it would work. And not only like a good, clean peer review, but being sure that the monitoring firm has that practice expertise to do the monitoring and to oversight. It would be a horrible thing in the end to find out that that we didn't have a good match and that, you know, it's a negative consequence really for everybody um, all around. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Corgan. Ms. Tu? So, Ms. Center, do I understand that the, the potential monitor, they come from a firm that has somebody there has license for att attestation, right? So, if they have the proper license, wouldn't wouldn't that kind of capture any potential issue? So the third party uh, monitor does have an attest authority license. The third party monitor would have also had to have undergone a peer review. Uh, so there is that additional requirement there. I, I'm, I hear the feedback from the other members and, uh, and of course we would not want to get ourselves in a situation where we question the quality of the third party monitor at the end. So we can take that feedback back and, and consider that as we consider building this out. And just to point out, this would eventually need to be um, addressed via regulations, and it's not really in regulatory language yet. And so that in and of itself, I think, will also help provide some of that structure, if you will, um, to this process. Thank you, Ms. Center. Ms. Ward? I have a question, and I'll, forgive me, because I don't know, I'm not a CPA, but I'm just curious, the third party, the monitor, is this something as a volunteer, as a mentorship, or are they paid? Well, I'm not a CPA either, but I can answer that question. So um, I'm, I'm sure they're, they're going to want to be paid for their services. Thank you. Any additional board, Mr. Rosenbaum? No, I was just gonna say other than the the things that need to be ironed out and the additional thing, what I, I think you've done a great job here in laying out the framework for what um, is kind of an issue. So thank you. Ms. Corrigan. I, I don't know whether we need a motion here or just the suggestion that staff kind of move forward, gather this information, put together a good package and at the appropriate time, bring it back uh, to the CPC. Mm -hmm. no further. Yeah, no motion is needed. Uh, they just need our feedback at this time. So thank you, Ms. Corrigan. Uh, I just had one question. In terms of frequency of G firm owners being interested in this pathway, do we have that data yet or is that something you plan to acquire with the next stage of getting the feedback from that group of people? So I cannot give you numbers today. Right now, staff are mining the data we have to try and locate individuals that attempted to apply for a license conversion, and we said they could not apply for one because they were a firm owner. So we're attempting to mine that data to identify some individuals that will um, be a part of a conversation we want to have with them. I don't anticipate that this is going to be a large number of, of firm owners, but I think it's important for us to provide a pathway, whether it's a large number or not. Thank you. Okay, do I have any public comment here in Sacramento? Seeing none, moderator, please open the Q&A. This is the moderator and at the direction of the committee, I've opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click the Q&A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen or use the raise hand function. And audio only participants may raise their hand by pressing star three on their device. I'll pause a moment to allow the public time to access these features and submit their requests. All right, and seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A panel? Yes, thank you, moderator. Okay, moving on to agenda item five, 
discussion and possible action regarding the National Association of State Boards of Accountancy proposed revisions to the Uniform Accountancy Act model rules. And we'll have a presentation from Mr. Matthew Parsons. Thank you, Chair Lotta. I am Matthew Parsons and I'm a coordinator in the License Renewal and Continuing Competency Unit. The purpose of this agenda item is to provide the CBA with the opportunity Mr. to- Mr. Parsons, sorry, can you no. please pull your mic a little bit oh, closer? Oh, sure, pardon me, sorry. No, that's okay, thank you. I thought I brought it close enough. Um, the purpose of this agenda item is to provide the CBA with the opportunity to discuss the National Association of State Boards of Accountancy's proposed revisions to the Uniform Accountancy Act's model rules, exposure draft that pertains to peer review. The AICPA's peer review program is the sole peer review program provider recognized by the CBA. As members may recall, throughout 2022 and 2023, the CBA discussed the CBA's lack of access to peer review documentation and information held by the AICPA. The AICPA uses the Peer Review Integrated Management Application, or PRIMA, as its peer review administration system. Firms use PRIMA to opt in to sharing documents and information with the CBA via the AICPA's facil Facilitated State Boards Access FISBA web tool. Presently, California firms are not required to opt into sharing of information with the CBA. To address this, the CBA has proposed a statutory change in the CBA's 2024 Sunset Review Report, which is included in reference in Attachment 3. The exposure draft includes a strikeout and underlined version of existing model rules incorporating the proposed changes and a clean version incorporating all proposed revisions. The proposed model rules include changes to rules 7-4 and 7-5. The proposed changes identify a list of applicable documents and information that must be submitted to a board, including language addressing when the documents and information should be submitted. Additionally, the proposed revisions require firms to submit documents and objective information to its state board and allow the administering entity to provide the board access to documents and objective information via secure website process such as the AICPA's FASBA web tool. The CBA recommended statutory change generally encompasses NASBA's proposed revision to the UAA model rules and staff recommend that CBA support the proposed changes. However, the CBA may want to suggest NASBA consider an evergreen definition of objective information as a means of reducing the need to modify the model rules and any statute or regulations developed based on them if new information is added to FASBA or the AICPA renames or retitles these documents. Staff have prepared a draft comment letter in support of the intent of the proposed revisions, while also suggesting that NASBA consider further refinement of the proposed language that will make it more evergreen in nature. The draft comment letter is included as attachment four. Staff recommend the CBA make a motion to send the comment letter to NASBA. If the CBA wishes to modify the letter, staff recommend that the CBA delegate authority to the CBA president to approve the comment letter for submission by the conclusion of the comment period. Staff will continue to monitor the proposed changes to, model, to the model rules. If NASBA seeks to publish a subsequent exposure draft regarding changes, staff will provide it to the CBA for review and consideration. Finally, please note the typos in the original item have been corrected and will be posted following this meeting. That concludes my presentation. I will now turn it back over to Chair Lada and do my best to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. Do I have any board member comments or questions? Mr. Rosenbaum? Yeah, just can you explain a little bit more about the evergreen language? Um, are, currently, there are specified documents that need to be provided, but um, the evergreen language, for example, I, I didn't see a suggested language, but is it and other? <laughs> is that essentially what you would uh, recommend? So uh, the UAA model rules are pretty explicit in terms of the documents that they have identified. Um, my, my guess is they were based upon what AICPA has defined as objective information. We do know historically there has been one change by AICPA in the past 
from what is available on NASBA. We do know that when that happened, uh, states were uh, forced to make changes to their regulations uh, because of a change in providing additional information on that site. So providing an evergreen definition would hopefully um, reduce or eliminate the need to do that. We um, have evergreen language in what we proposed for our sunset. It's available on page four of five of the board item. It's in that little part that's indented because it's a quote. That's our attempt at evergreen. Of course, it may not be perfect, but it is something for um, NASBA to consider um, uh, as they hopefully receive other comments um, on this exposure draft. Any additional board comments? Seeing none, any public comments here? Oh, sorry. Uh, I need a motion from the board members. I believe uh, one of the options is to adopt the proposed language in the comment letter to send to NASPA. Otherwise, if there are edits, uh, there would be a different motion for that. Ms. Corgan. I move to adopt, uh, I move that uh, staff work with current president to finalize attachment for and submit it. Thank you. Do I have a second? Ms. Tu? I will second it. Thank you. Any additional board member comments? Seeing none, any public comment here in Sacramento? Seeing none, <clears throat> moderator, please open the Q&A. This is the moderator and at the direction of the committee, I've opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click the Q&A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen or use the raise hand function. And audio only participants may raise their hand by pressing star three on their device. I'll go ahead and pause a moment to allow the public time to access these features and submit their requests. All right, and seeing none, would you like me to close that Q&A feature? Yes, please, thank you. Ms. Reed, can you call for the vote? Yes. Christian Lada? Yes. Joe Rosenbaum? Yes. Yen Tu? Yes. And Evangeline Ward? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Moving on to our final agenda item number six, agenda items for the next meeting. Do we have any member comments on this item? Seeing none, any public comment on this item in Sacramento? Seeing none, moderator, please open the Q&A. This is the moderator, not the direction of the committee. I've opened up the Q&A feature for public comment. Members of the public, if you would like to make a comment on this item, please click the Q&A icon located at the bottom right hand corner of your WebEx screen or use the raise hand function. And audio only participants may raise their hand by pressing star three on their device. I'll pause a moment to allow the public time to access these features and submit their requests. All right, and seeing none, would you like me to close the Q&A panel? Yes, thank you, moderator. With that, that concludes our Committee on Professional Conduct meeting today. Thank you.